Shalom and welcome to Treasured Inheritance Ministry with myself, Yosef Ben Avram. And you've joined me today for the special teaching called Yeshua, our Passover Lamb. As we begin to get ready to celebrate Passover this weekend, I pray that Yahweh will really speak to you and that you'll come to understand the work of Messiah Yeshua, what He has done for you during this time. So brothers and sisters, without further ado, let's pray and then let's get straight into this teaching. Father Yahweh, we want to thank you in the wonderful and powerful name of Yeshua Mashiach. Father, that you send forth your Son, Yeshua, to die on a stake for us. Father, to redeem us to a right relationship with you so that we might be restored and renewed. Father, I pray that during this Passover season that we will remember, Father, the work that Messiah Yeshua has done. And Father, that we will apply that work to our lives so that we can mature, so that we can grow up, so that we can become that expressed image of Yeshua in this world. And Father, I pray that each and every person that will join for this teaching, Father, will have an understanding that they will be richly blessed, that they'll leave Father renewed and restored. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, in John chapter 1 and verse 29, we read the following, and it says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Brothers and sisters, this is a very powerful scripture, and I want you to ponder and think about it as we go on in this teaching. Now, you know, over the years that I've been in ministry, I have been blessed to partake in many different Passover events, each with their own unique and and different style. And You know, many times these events are there to remember the events of the book of Exodus. And it seems like so often we just go through the Haggadah in a certain kind of religious way. But you know, as I've grown in my faith and allowed Yeshua to do some serious gardening in my own heart, I've come to see and view Passover in a totally different way. I'm not saying that we should not remember what happened in the book of Exodus. Hear me out. Most certainly not, because Paul himself tells us that the events of the Exodus are there as a reminder to this final generation, and that we need to remember what took place in Egypt. But yet, as I read the scriptures... I cannot help but stop at the words of Yeshua to his disciples. And his words, truly, brothers and sisters, they echo in my heart. And it makes me sit up and think. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 24, we read the following. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this. Take hold of what I'm saying to you now. Do this. In other words, do what I am doing right now with you in remembrance of me. And they were sitting having the Passover meal. And it's important that we understand that Yeshua is saying, you know what? Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, you know, Passover is a time where we should stop and we should take stock of what Yeshua has done for us. Not only what he has done for us, but what he's still going to do in this final generation. And the word that Yeshua gave me for this time is deliverance. And he has given me this similar word before. And I believe that Yeshua is wanting us to understand now more than ever that what he has said he's going to bring to pass. Brothers and sisters, Passover is a time of deliverance. It's a time of deliverance from oppression. It's a time of deliverance from from all the things that enslaved us while we were in Egypt. It's a time for us to remember that we were once in darkness, but we have now been brought into His marvelous light. We have been redeemed and delivered from the oppression of the enemy. It's a time where we can walk in that freedom that was given to us through the death and resurrection of Messiah Yeshua. Now, brothers and sisters, you and I don't have to look far to see that the days that we are alive in are truly dark and desperate. It doesn't take much to see that the enemy is hard at work to bring about his final plan of destruction. You know, just as in the days of Israel and Pharaoh, so once again Satan is hard at work to enslave us, to enslave our minds, to enslave us, to to cause us to be under taskmasters. And his aim is to cause you to lose hope. If he can cause you to lose hope, you lose your faith and you, you become a person who worries so much that eventually everything is focused on that. He wants you to forget what Yeshua has already done for you as well as what he's about to still do in the days to come. 
This is why Yeshua said to his disciples, do this. Do what I am doing with you now in remembrance of me. When you partake of the Passover, you need to do it in remembrance of me. He understood that his time was come and that it was now time for him to become the Passover. The Passover and the Lamb that was about to take away the sins of man. His time had come, brothers and sisters, to lay his life down so that you and I might be delivered from the bondage of sin and death. You know, Passover holds the key to our salvation and endurance to the end. When we put our focus on the work of Yeshua, we begin to be built up in our faith and we begin to see the fuller picture of what is still to come. And brothers and sisters, believe me, there is still so much coming and there is still plenty that Yeshua has for you. Like I said, we cannot deny that this world is changing and the stage has been set for the coming anti-Messiah. Those who have sold their souls to the, to the enemy are hard at work to promote destruction as well as strip down every single institution and place that stands for truth. They started from movies to politicians. It's all geared at propaganda so that when the anti-Messiah finally comes, the masses will be deluded and succumb to his plan. But the Bible says clearly that you, brothers and sisters, who have been taken out of darkness are no longer children of darkness. You have been given light and therefore you should have discernment. This is the very reason why Yeshua came, so that we might walk in the light. In John chapter 3 and verse 19, it says this, And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men loved the darkness rather than the light, for their works were wicked. You know, brothers and sisters, nothing much has changed. Man still chooses to reject Yeshua and his work. They choose not to allow his light to shine in them. Instead, they continue to love the darkness and they follow in the way of destruction. Brothers and sisters, I pray that as we go through this teaching that we will be honest with ourselves. Each one of us, as Paul says, need to search our hearts and allow the Ruach to show us areas in our lives where we need to be set free. Places in our lives where we need deliverance. The places where we still have spiritual disease and maybe where we walk in things like intentional sins. For others of you, you claim to be saved, yet you struggle continually with your, stre- with your flesh. Maybe you struggle with oppression, depression. Maybe you struggle with fear, anxiety. There is so many things, brothers and sisters, that so many people struggle with. But I want you to hear the words of Yeshua. I believe that now more than ever at this season in our lives, Yeshua wants you to know that it was for you. It was for you that he came. It was for you that he died. It was for you that he shed his blood. He came to lay his life down so that you might be set free. So that you might live and so that you might be a vessel of his glory. He doesn't want you just to be saved. He wants you to live a godly life, a redeemed life. He wants you to be a powerful vessel of his glory. And how do we do that? By being set free, by living in the realm of His presence. You know, it's this message that I believe Yeshua is wanting to share with you, that He's the deliverer of the world. He came to set the captives free and to restore us to a right relationship with our Father. He took the penalty, brothers and sisters, of our sins upon Himself, so that we might become a new creation in Him. And this is what Passover is all about. This is why we need to do as he told his disciples and remember his work, his finished work. But there is more to the story that many forget. You know, we tend to lose hope because we live our lives in the flesh and not in the spirit. Passover is all about our deliverance. And I believe that we should be hearing the voice of our groom each and every year telling us more and more of his plan for our lives. And how we are to overcome. Passover is an appointment with our King. A time where we can hear His heart for our lives. And where we can leave change renewed and refreshed. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8 says this. So then, let us observe the festival not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, 
but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You know, Rav Shul, Paul tells us a few things. One, he says, let's not observe the festival like we did last year. Let us not come together and do the same thing over and over. Let us not come, let us, let us not come with the old leaven, but instead, let's come with new leaven. And you know, this speaks to me that we are to be continually expecting to hear from Yeshua for our lives. It's talking about a living relationship with our King. Paul goes on to say, let's not come with a wicked heart or with an evil intent. Such people should not even come to the feast. Instead, he says that we are to keep the festival with sincerity and truth. Not only are we to have a right heart, but we are to come expectant to hear from our King. Brothers and sisters, how expectant are you to hear from Yeshua? I know I am. I know I want direction for the days ahead. And this is something I feel Yeshua is wanting for you and for me. He wants us to have direction. He wants us to take hold of the promise that He has given to us. And one such promise is that He will deliver us. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Brothers and sisters, I want you to wake up. The Bible says, Wake up, O sleeper, and see that there is a time that no man has seen coming upon this earth. A time of true destruction and wickedness that will shake the most spiritual person alive. Yeshua said that even the elect might be deceived. He will cause many to fall away from the faith and return to the world, back to Egypt. Others will lose hope and vision. And you know, the Bible is clear in what happens to a man or a woman with no vision. They perish. You know, as I sat with Yeshua, He began to share with me the truth about Him being our Deliverer. Brethren, if you want to make it to the end, then you need to realize that the condition of your heart is more important than the things you know in your head. The condition of your heart is more important than the knowledge in your brain. When we walk around with knowledge, yet our hearts are filled with sin, we run a huge risk of not being ready for His return. We become like an open gate that has no lock. Because a heart that is divided is an easy target for the enemy. To sow doubt or to attack you and cause you to doubt and fear and then ultimately lose hope. Passover is a time, brothers and sisters, where we take stock of our lives and we remember our deliverance from oppression and slavery. We remember what took place under the wicked rule of Pharaoh over the children of Israel, how he placed taskmasters over them and caused them to carry a heavy burden. Yet they cried out to Yahweh and he heard them. In his faithfulness, he sent a deliverer in the man and person of Moshe. The book of Hebrews tells us something very, very important. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 1. Therefore set apart brothers, partakers of the heavenly calling, closely consider the missionary and high priest of our confession, Messiah Yeshua, who was trustworthy to him who appointed him, and also Moshe in all his house. For this one has been deemed worthy of more esteem than Moshe, as as much as he who built the house enjoys more respect than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all is Elohim. And Moshe indeed was trustworthy in all his house as a servant for a witness of what would be spoken later. What the writer of the book of Hebrews is showing us is the similarity between Moses and Yeshua, not forgetting that Yeshua is far superior. Yeshua will return, brothers and sisters, to regather his children. And so too this was the role of Moses, to gather the children of Israel and lead them to the promised land. I believe that this is the message that Yeshua wants us to understand, that He alone is our Deliverer, that He wants you and I to remember Him this season. 2,000 years ago, Yeshua came to earth and He died for our sins. He perfectly fulfilled the requirements to be our Passover Lamb. His mission was to die so that we might be set free from the bondage of sin and death. His entire message was a message of freedom to those who were oppressed. 
You know, when Yeshua preached his first sermon in Nazareth, he quoted from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. But he read it, and it's recorded for us in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, and it says, The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Maybe you're listening to this teaching today, and you are brokenhearted. To proclaim, to proclaim release to the captives. Maybe you're feeling like you're a captive with your own thoughts, your own mindset. And it goes on and says, and recovery recovery of sight to the blind, and to send away crushed ones with release, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh. Brothers and sisters, the entire reason that Yeshua came was to bring deliverance to the captives. You know, what's interesting is that the Greek word used in this passage for captive means someone taken as a prisoner of war by the point of a spear. Maybe you're feeling today like the enemy has you by the point of a spear and he's driving you further and further away. Brothers and sisters, the prisoners in the kingdom of darkness are captive to their own carnal desires, which then birth seeds of destruction. Yeshua came to set us free from these desires and strongholds so that we might become a light to the nations. This is the reason that our King died and this is what Yeshua wants you to understand. What the disciples were hoping for 2,000 years ago shall come to pass as we enter into the final days. As we begin to see the rise of the new world order, we need to take hope that our King has overcome on our behalf. And that he has promised that he will return. That return, brothers and sisters, and destroying the enemy and setting up his kingdom, that is true deliverance. In Matthew chapter 16, Yeshua asks his disciples, who do they say that he is? And the story holds the keys to understanding of what is required of us and what lies ahead for us as we wait for Yeshua's return. In Matthew chapter 16 in verse 13 it says, Now when Yeshua came into parts of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his taught ones, saying, Who do men say the son of Adam is? And they said, Some say, Yochanan, the Immerser, and others, Eliyahu, and others, Yeremiahu, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, And you? Who do you say I am? And Simon Kepha answered, You are the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. And Yeshua answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in the heavens. And I also say to you that you are Kepha, and on this rock I shall build my assembly, and the gates of Sheol shall not overcome it. And I shall give you the keys of the reign of the heavens, and whatever you bind on earth shall having been bound in the heavens, and whatever you loosen on earth shall be having been loosened in the heavens." I have taught on this passage of scripture numerous times, but it's important that we bring it in again and draw from it this Passover season. You know, Peter understood that Yeshua was the Messiah, yet he was still there hoping and waiting for Yeshua to destroy the kingdom of Rome and liberate them from their tyranny. But this was not the purpose of his coming. Instead, he came to restore us to Abba Father, to help us become the sons and daughters of his kingdom. His desire was and still is to give us the keys of that kingdom so that we might be the priests that he desires us to be so that we can execute judgment and right ruling on his behalf. Brothers and sisters, because of Yeshua's death and resurrection, you and I have access to this kingdom and we are now able to become his children, children of inheritance. This is why Yeshua said to his disciples that they are to do this in remembrance of him. The Passover, brothers and sisters, is to be about Yeshua so that we can remember his work and what he has done so that we can grow and mature and become that children of light that he wants us to be. Yeshua's Passover, hear me out, Yeshua's Passover far supersedes the Passover of Exodus. Without his sacrifice, we have no hope and we have no future. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 20 continues and it says the following. And it says, Then he warned his taught ones that they should say to no one that he is Yeshua the Messiah. From that time Yeshua began to show to his taught ones that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer much from the elders and chief priests and scribes 
and be killed, and to be raised again the third day. And Kepha took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Be kind to yourself, Master, this shall not be to you. You see, Peter didn't get it. He believed that Yeshua was the Messiah, yet he was still hoping for deliverance from the evil that was upon the earth and propagated by Rome. Brothers and sisters, what Peter was hoping for is a very soon reality for you and I. This is what Yeshua is wanting you and I to understand. He wants you to understand that he is coming back as the conquering king. He is coming to fetch his bride that has made herself ready. And he's coming to destroy the kingdom of darkness once and for all. We can take hope that he has not abandoned us. The story is far from over. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 23 it says, But he turned and said to Kepha, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for your thoughts are not those of Elohim, but those of men. You see, Peter didn't understand that Yeshua had to die that we might have life, and life in abundance. That his coming was far greater than what Peter understood. His coming was so that you and I might become his children, so that we might become part of his family. So that all men who believe and repent might be saved. Isn't that just amazing? The problem is that too many people have stopped at that part of the story. The church has wrapped it up just there, forgetting the words of Yeshua to his disciples a little further in the passage. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, Yeshua continues and says to his disciples the following, Then Yeshua said to his taught ones, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses his own life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? For the son of Adam is going to come in the esteem of his father with his messengers, and then he shall reward each according to his works. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death until they see the son of Adam coming in his reign. Oh man, isn't this just amazing? Can you see right here, he's telling his disciples the full story. Yet they didn't fully understand it. But you and I are not in darkness that this day of truth might take us over. No, instead we can listen and obey and strive to do all that our King is asking us now. Yeshua says clearly, if you want to see my deliverance in your life, if you want to see my glory and my power working in you, then you need to deny yourself, pick up your cross, And learn to follow me. You need to accept my deliverance that I've given to you when I came to die on that stake. You need to allow my work to change you from the inside out so that you no longer live by your flesh, but live by my spirit. You need to believe that you have what it takes to be my disciple. You need to understand that the same power that raised me from the dead can live in you. This is what Yeshua wants you to understand. And he continues to tell them in verse 25 that what does it profit to gain the whole world, yet your life is a mess. Yet you didn't allow my work to change you, yet you chose not to accept what I have done for you. Then Yeshua ends off in verse 27 with something very important. He gives them a promise that he is coming back. He is coming back as they were hoping, as the conquering king. He is coming back to deliver them and to deliver us from this body of death and destructive world that we are in. Yet he tells us that he will reward those who have faithfully obeyed him and he will judge those who choose the path of compromise. This Passover Yeshua wants us to remember deeply that it's all about him. It's all about his death and resurrection and the fact that he will return to finish what he started. That because of his death and resurrection, All we need for life and godliness resides in Him. He has given it all to you. Brothers and sisters, His desire is to set you free once and for all from the things that you struggle with. I think that there are many of you who are not fleshly believers, yet maybe you are like Peter. You doubt that what you have and what you have been given You doubt that that what it takes to, to really be a disciple. You doubt that you have what it takes. Let us not forget that Peter doubted many times. He even denied Yeshua out of fear. 
something many people struggle with is believing that they have what it takes to be all they can be for Abba Father. I believe that Yeshua wants to set us free from the baggage that we carry. He wants to help us see ourselves as He sees us. You know, if we are to make it through the days ahead, we need to have a life-changing experience with Him. We need to believe that He has set us free and that He will never leave us nor forsake us. That He is our great deliverer and that He is coming so back, back so soon for us. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every person according to his work. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Brothers and sisters, if you're listening to this teaching and you do not know Yeshua, then my prayer for you is that by the end of it, you will know Him. That you will come to understand that this world is fading away. And that only Yeshua is able to deliver you from the coming wickedness and destruction. The stage has been set for the final showdown. The book of Revelation details for us what those days will be like as well as Matthew chapter 24. For those who are not in Yeshua, it will be a time of great distress and panic. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 3 onwards details for us exactly what that day will be like. It says, And he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, covered with the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup, filled with abominations and filthiness of her whoring. And upon her forehead a name written, A secret, Babel the Great, the mother of all whores, and of abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the set-apart ones, and with the blood of the witnesses of Yeshua. And having seen her, I marveled greatly. The Bible tells us that in the days ahead, Babel, the mother of all harlots, will become drunk on the blood of the saints and those who hold the testimony of Yeshua. And it's for this reason that we need to know the voice of our groom, that we need to remember that He is our Deliverer. Many are looking at the signs of the times and fear is gripping them. They have lost hope and they fear what is coming. Truthfully, if we do not know Yeshua, we should be fearing. We should be afraid and we should desire to get our house in order. But for those who are in Yeshua, we wait with anticipation because we know that He is coming to save us. Nothing can stop what is coming. The days ahead will become so evil that only Yeshua Himself will be able to destroy the enemy and rescue His bride. Revelation 19 verse 11 to 21 reads the following. And I saw the heaven open and there was a white horse and he who sat on him was called trustworthy and true and in righteousness he judges and fights and his eyes were as the flames of fire and on his head were many crowns having a name that had been written which no one had perceived except himself and having been dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of Yahweh. And the armies of heaven, dressed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall shepherd them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of El Shaddai. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, Sovereign of Sovereigns and Master of Masters. And I saw one messenger standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in mid-heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great Elohim, to eat the flesh of the sovereigns, and the flesh of the commanders, and the flesh of the strong ones, and the flesh of horses, and those who sit on them, and all the flesh of the people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the sovereigns of the earth, and the armies gathered together to fight him, who sat on the horse and his army. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he led astray those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. The two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, burning with sulfur, and the rest were killed with a sword which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Brothers and sisters, the world is about to be shaken. First will come the evil, then the king of glory. Brethren, this is Passover, And Yeshua wants you to keep in remembrance of Him. He wants you to understand that to those who have accepted His sacrifice and chosen to lay their lives down for His, 
there is a coming deliverance that no eye has seen, nor ear has heard. My prayer is that you will be like Peter, that even though you fear maybe, maybe you doubt, maybe you have struggles in this life, but that you would come to know that Yeshua is for you and not against you. You know, I always find it amazing how Peter denies Yeshua and doubts himself so often. Yet through his life, the kingdom of Yeshua advanced with great zeal. It was in one day that 3,000 souls got saved through the preaching of Peter. What changed in Peter? What caused him to stand and proclaim Yeshua with such power? I believe that he allowed the work of Yeshua's death and resurrection to change him. He allowed the spirit of Yahweh to uproot those areas in his life that caused him to stumble. And it was because of this that Peter became a true son of inheritance. This is why I believe Peter was able to write the following words for us. I believe that Peter not only understood it, but the words changed his life. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18 onwards it says this, Because even Messiah once suffered for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to Elohim, having been put to death indeed in flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which also he went and proclaimed unto the spirits in prison, who were disobedient at one time, when the patience of Elohim waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight beings, were saved through water, which figure now also saves us, immersion, not a putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience, towards Elohim, through the resurrection of Yeshua Messiah, who having gone into heaven is at the right hand of Elohim, messengers and authorities and powers having been subjected to him. You know, Peter sums up our deliverance for us. In verse 18, he tells us, Yeshua also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to Yahweh, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. You see, brothers and sisters, He died for our sins. He died for yours, He died for mine, and everyone else's. He is the righteous that died for the unrighteous. He was put to death because of our sins. He took our place. How easily we forget this. You know, if Yeshua didn't die for us, we would be at that cross. We should never, ever forget this. Peter goes on in verse 20 and makes reference to Noah and the days of Noah and the wicked spirits. You know, brothers and sisters, this is something that Yeshua made reference to in Matthew chapter 24, that we are to remember the days of Lot and Noah. It was Yahweh that delivered Noah as well as Lot at a time of great evil and despair. This is what Yeshua wants you to know, that those who remain in him and keep his commandments will be kept from the coming wrath in the hour of trial. It's the righteous that are saved and the sinner that he sent to hell. Peter then then ends off by saying that we are to put off the filth of the flesh and to keep our minds and consciences clear of all evil, that we need to remember that Yeshua who died for our sins also resurrected so that we might have life. Just as he was raised from the dead, so we too will receive a glorified body and we will overcome if we endure to the end. Brethren, It's Yeshua, our pass over lamb, that has broken the reign of sin and death. He has taken our judgment upon himself and he now sits at the right hand of the Father in all his glory. You know, throughout history, whenever Yahweh's people cried out for help, he sent to deliver. My prayer is that you will not stop praying and crying out to Yahweh about the state of this world. Let us pray that he will send us the final deliverer, Yeshua, the Savior, of the world. I end this teaching off by reading 2 Samuel chapter 22 from verse 4. I call on Yahweh the one to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death surrounded me. Floods of Bilal made me afraid. The cords of the grave were all around me. The snares of death were before me. In my distress I called upon Yahweh and to my Elohim I cried. And from his heckle he heard my voice, and my cry was in his ears. In the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of the heavens were troubled, because he was wroth. Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it, and he bowed the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. And as he rode upon a cherub, a cherub and flew, and was seen upon the wings of the wind, and he put darkness around him as booths. 
darkness of waters, thick clouds. From the brightness before him, coals of fire were kindled. Yahweh thunders from the heavens, and the Most High sent forth his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and confused them. And the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundation of the world were uncovered. At the rebuke of Yahweh, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils, he sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, from those hating me, for they were stronger than I. Do we believe that Yahweh can do that for us? That he can deliver us from all the things that plague us? Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you in the name of Yeshua. Father, for your people, for their hearts, for their desire, Father, to know you in the beauty of holiness. Father Yahweh, I want to pray today that if there is someone that has been listening to this teaching that does not know you, if there is someone today that is listening, that is bound in sin, that is struggling, Father, with their, with their, their, their flesh, Father, today I pray that as they cry out to you, just as, as we read in this, in this passage of Scripture in Samuel, Father, that you will deliver them, that you will set them free right now in the name of Yeshua. Father, that they will know that you are for them and not against them, that you love them and that you desire to change them, that you desire to renew them, that you desire to set them free, that every shackle, Father, that is upon them will be broken in the name of Yeshua, that you will set them free. And Father, that they will be raised up in this generation to be strong, to be courageous and to be an overcomer. Father, we thank you for this time and the season that we are going into. We pray, Father, that the glory and the honor and praise will be, will be given that is due to Yeshua. Yeshua, we praise you and we worship you and we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you that you came and you died to set us free so that we might be restored to our Father and in a right relationship, so that we might receive the Spirit of Elohim, the Spirit of Yahweh that changes us. We pray, Father, that you will continue to lead us and guide us. In the wonderful and powerful name of Yeshua Mashiach, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I thank you for joining me for this teaching. I pray that you will consider heading over to treasuredinheritanceministry.com where you can get all our teachings and join the community and just get more of what we put out. You know, YouTube is just one part of the ministry that we do. So I pray that you will consider heading over to Treasure Inheritance Ministry. I also invite you to like and subscribe to this channel. It helps us to get these teachings out to more. Brothers and sisters, until I see you on the next one, may Yahweh bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and give you peace. Shalom.